So here we are in my bathroom, and you may be wondering, Matt, what do bathrooms have to do with lightsabers? And I'm going to tell you, because today I'm going to be weathering the brass section of my wind vane, and in order to do that, you have to clean it first with soap and water. So let me kind of disassemble this here. So I've got all these pieces, and I have to um, rinse them off with soap and water first before we uh, put them in the ammonia vapor bath. So I've got some dish soap here. Get some water running. Alright, so there are all three components of the wind vane in the plastic cup. So as you can see, I'm set up here outside because we've got ammonia here and this stuff puts off some really nasty fumes and you don't really want to breathe it in if you can help it. We're going to uh, take our brass parts and uh, pour some ammonia in my little Oscar here. This is my uh, ammonia chamber for now. And then set this down in there. You don't want the ammonia to actually touch the brass but then the fumes and the vapors and everything are going to actually get in there and tarnish the brass and make it look really dark. At least that's the idea. I've never done this before. We'll s see how it goes. Notice this is the, the, the clear ammonia. This isn't the yellow lemon scented stuff. You want the real deal from what I've read. Again, I've never done this before. We're, we're finding this out together. you actually shouldn't need too much but the more that you pour in there the more vapors you're gonna get and the more it will tarnish so I've got my cup in there with all the brass parts I'm gonna put the lid on and we're just gonna let this sit for a few hours I'll come back here in a couple hours check on it and uh, see how it goes all right so it's been about two and a half hours or so and uh, we're gonna open this up and see what we've got be careful I don't want to breathe in any of these fumes if I don't have to it's looking a little darker but not quite where I want it to be yet so I'm gonna put them back in there for another few hours all right so after about like uh, about nine or so hours in there with the ammonia this is what we've got. Like you can see there's like a little bit of green tarnish in there. That's freaking cool. Not quite as dark as I would have hoped, but it's definitely not bright. You know, it's definitely dulled down and looks kind of antique. So I'm not sure how much more the ammonia is actually going to do. I might have to try some of the brass black to get it as dark as I want. But it definitely did some work. Wouldn't call it a total failure, but it's not a success either. Okay, so I've decided I want to try to weather these a little bit more, because why not? So I put them back into the cooler with some more ammonia, and I'm leaving this piece out for a couple of reasons. Firstly, on a lot of replicas that I've seen, this piece does seem to be a little bit lighter in color than the rest of the wind vane. Plus, I also just want to compare and see how effective this method really is. Um, I mean, this is obviously tarnished to a degree, but I'm not sure if it's actually... You know, once it reaches a certain point, if it's going to tarnish any more or not. So I figure I'll leave these in here overnight. Be about 18 hours total. And this will have only been in there 9. So I'll really be able to compare and see how effective this method is. And uh, if I don't get the results I want, then I'll go ahead and splurge on some of the brass black. But, you know, the ammonia was less than a dollar for the bottle. So if I can make this work, it's definitely more cost effective. Alright, so I've got part of the uh, the wind vane put back onto the grenade, but what I wanted to do first was try a little bit of steel wool on the uh, upper portion of the stem, because on the, uh, the Death Star version it seems that from here up is a uh, brighter color of brass than from here down. Also just, you know, this also allowed me to compare how well the ammonia worked, so I've got some steel wool here. So let's see how that works. Yeah. Just bringing some of that... I don't know if you can see the contrast there between the, the top and the bottom, but yeah, check that out. Steel wool is doing a good job. But there's definitely a noticeable difference in sheen 
between that part and the bottom part. But yeah, I think I might try to get this even darker. I got a crazy idea. I don't know what's going to happen, if this is going to work. But those are actually espresso grounds down in the cooler. And I figure, and you know, while I'm, uh, you know, waiting to get some um, funds together to invest in some more weathering materials, I'll uh, go ahead and give this a shot. So I'm going to, you know, put some ammonia down in there with the espresso grounds and then put my little tray of parts down in there and leave it overnight and see what happens. Alright, so this is interesting. I'm not sure if this is showing up on camera or not. We noticed this part up here that I had hit with the steel wool earlier. Actually, when I put it back in with the ammonia and the espresso, got, you know, significantly darker than these other two parts. I want all this stuff to be really, really dark, so I think what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and shine this back up with the steel wool, but all of it, and then put it back in the ammonia and see what we get. Alright, so I shined this back up a little bit with the steel wool and tried to hit all of it as evenly as I could. You know, I didn't get down in the threading. Doesn't I don't feel like that really matters. But I knocked off a lot of that tarnish. So we'll see how it goes this time. I'm not sure if the espresso grounds are going to do anything. But they've been sitting in this cooler for the greater part of a day. Let's see what we've got. Very cool. Very cool. I'm going to clean this off and put this on the lightsaber. So, Alright, so here's the wind vane put back onto the saber. And, you know, I think I might consider this done. I mean, we'll see how I feel in a few days or whatever. Um, but yeah, that looks awesome. And I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to polish this upper part, because I think I might try to make this look more like the Tunisia version of the Saber, you know, the version of the prop worn by Alec Guinness while they were filming in Tunisia, as opposed to the version that he carried on the Death Star. Um, and in which case, you know, this entire section seems to be dark. On the Death Star version, the stem above the wind vane is, you know, a little bit brighter brass from what I've seen. But I also wanted to point out, I put in <laughs> the, uh, an edge connector card from a Sloth Furnace, just for fun. Just to be like, eh, what if? What if uh, Ben Kenobi survived into uh, The Empire Strikes Back? And another cool thing is the emitter itself is actually starting to weather. It's getting a little rusty just from handling it. And it's kind of looking cool. Now, I might knock that back with some steel wool and try to actually control the weathering a bit myself. But that is actually really cool <laughs> how it's doing it on its own.